but it's over now. Hey. Oh, and the award for the best life goes to you for making me believe that you could be faithful to me. Let's hear your speech. Oh, hey, a round of applause. Then she's talking about how, yeah, and then on top of that, you was um smashing strippers and prostitutes. And he was like, they don't count. Girl, that is disrespectful. And after that, you should have just left. You know, why did you run in that bathroom? We're going to get into it, y'all. But after he said that they don't count, that don't count, strippers and prostitutes don't count. You know, and like I said, he should, she should have just left. But I'm just thinking to myself, I was looking at him like, what universe do you live in? You know what I'm saying? Where is this okay to deal with her like that? You know what I'm saying? And it's this shit fake. You know, and is Princess willing to chant her respect over this dumb little fly of a nigga? Like, it, it doesn't make sense. And there's no amount of love that somebody can have for somebody for them to treat them in this way. Because you basically told me that, you know, you basically um can sleep with anybody you want. And when I approach you about it, don't worry about it because it's just them. You know, I'm not doing this, but I am doing this, but don't worry about it. And for you, princess, to sit there and allow this nigga to take you through this, like I said, you should have got your purse, keys, um, phone, everything, and just roll the fuck out because he no longer deserves any of your time. And then proceeds to call her unfaithful and a cheater. Really? Because of all the things that you've done, I can call you many things, okay, honey? And it wouldn't just be no unfaithful and a cheater. Okay, how about whore slut nigga? That's what you are. Okay, I would have been dogging this nigga out talking to me like that. I'm telling y'all, I would have called him every slut ass nigga name in the book. And he probably would have told me, y'all need to get this bitch. Y'all need to get this bitch right now because I'm about to hurt this bitch. Because I would have been going in on his ass. You're not going to sit there and talk to me any fucking kind of way when you've been doing everything under the sun. And you expect me to sit there and take it? Like, Princess is the fool, and the reason why she's going through all this, y'all, because she has been taking it. People do what you allow them to do to you, and she has allowed it for so many years. And this is what you created, Princess. This is exactly what you created and what you get. Hey, everybody. It's your girl, Sassy Sean Tease. I'm coming back with another video. Yes, honey. Back with another one, girl. Y'all get into this episode of Love and Hip Hop Miami, okay? Y'all, we are here at this episode. And what's I here for? Mm, it was all right. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't all that. Um, the little princess and Ray J stuff, I wasn't here for it at first, but when we got deeper into, you know, the last little and I was like, mm, yeah, princess, you got it bad, honey, okay? And like I said, you need to give that nigga the best award because he does the most, okay? He does the absolute most. So, yeah, y'all, um, the show starts off with Florence De Luce, okay? And Marlon, her husband. So, they're at the Orlando Festival. Y'all know the festival they're supposed to be in because... Um, Kodak Black supposed to be there too, performing, so she was all psyched about that girl. We ain't get to see Kodak Black. Where was he at Raw? Okay. Nobody saw him, and yeah, it's probably because they ended up booing your ass. Girl, I was so embarrassed for you, girl. But anyway, y'all, the show starts off with Marlon. He is up there, and I couldn't believe it, y'all. I showed up. I was like, look at what Marlon is doing. They look like two damn kids, y'all. They was playing tug of war with the mic. And I'm just like, what is going on? So we later find out that you know, Marlon, I guess he was pissed off because, you know, the crowd wasn't feeling them, feeling him and Florence, and basically, like, they was booing Florence and everything, so maybe he got some of that, or when, I don't know, but something was going on where the crowd basically wasn't fucking with them, you know, so he tried to take the mic from the host. Who do you think you are? Like, I was, when I heard that, I was like, no wonder, and just like V, whoever Shassy manager is, is saying that that nigga's a whole clown doing that. Who jumps up there doing that like you gonna change some shit? They probably fuck with the host. This is who they know probably nine times out of ten. You know, he is probably a part of the community and everything. And you just went up there and did that. So he embarrassed himself, I thought. And yeah, they had to eventually they still tug and warn like fucking six and seven year old boys. And they eventually pushed them off the stage. And like I said, they up there. Um Florence tried to act like she was gonna step in and um change the crowd's mind or something they was like no bitch fuck you too they started booing her and everything and she was just like fuck it and walked off meanwhile they started to show gayelle her sister and i'm just like okay gayelle 
Because Gaia was looking like she liked what was going on with them. I was like, that's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? That's your sister. And she looked like when her sister was going through everything that she was looking like, yeah. You know, I saw that. I see everything up. But anyway, um, Florence decides she needs to leave, you know. And Gaia was like, no, you need to stay and play. You need to stay and play. So when they say play, they mean, you know, keep performing. And Florence is trying to tell her, no, that's unsafe. I'm not going back out there. I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable. You know, and Gaia was like, no, you have to play for me. You, I really need you to play. Like, saying, oh, listen, I'm just like, y'all... That was kind of scary for me because I was thinking how y'all know what is the little Spanish girl who, who died and the manager didn't fuck with her and, and nobody really knew. Um, anything for Selena, for Selena. It was Selena and Selena got killed, you know what I'm saying? So maybe I'm taking it too far, but how got Yale really wanted her sister to go back out there? Like that was kind of shisty. And yeah, I just didn't even understand why she still want her sister to go through a crowd booing her and for her to continue on stage. Maybe with some like scandalous shit, you know what I'm saying? She thought that, you know, eventually somebody would get up there and whoop Florence ass some. I don't know. You know, I could be taking it too far, y'all. I told y'all my mind goes. But or maybe it just could be the fact that she wanted to tell Florence the truth, okay, about what's been going on between her and Marlon. Okay, so, yeah, that's what it probably was. We're going to keep it at that. That's what it probably was that she wanted her to finish out the show because she wanted, you know, to tell her sister something at the end, you know. And for me, personally, I was just thinking, Gail, why would you want to tell your sister something like that after a show? She all hyped up, glad, proud of herself, proud of her accomplishment and everything, and you ready to come down and crush her with some information like that? Like, did you get her husband? And you're her sister, so what? That's just, uh, Guy Gail is evil to me, and you know, I used to be like, listen to Guy Gail, listen to Guy Gail, look, now I don't, I don't even know if I believe it if she says it, like, this is just me, y'all, because Guy Gail is after Florence, it just really looks like that, and this is what Florence has been saying the entire time, this girl is after me, she don't want me to be married to him, she's jealous of my marriage, she's jealous of everything that I have going on, and maybe that's the case, you know, but we'd probably be able to judge if Gael is telling the truth by how Marlon acts, you know, because I can always tell when a nigga is lying and we gonna figure it out, you know. But anyway, y'all, um, so yeah, they walk off, they leave out, um, Florence leaves out and she gets on FaceTime. So she's crying, bawling her eyes out. Yeah, um, they sabotage my show and the whole Haitian community. I had that back. I wanted to do it for the culture. And um, they've been hating on me. Um, Shasty and some other bitches been hating on me the whole time and they was up to it. I gotta get to the bottom of this because it's not right. And she just crying so much, so hard, y'all. And um, so they get back to her place and her and her manager is just sitting around. So they're discussing, yeah, I know who was at the bottom of this, and they think that is Shasty's management, D. His name is D. Um, sure, Dawson guy, he kind of fights. I was like, okay, the way he was handling mom, I was like, damn, nigga, I hope you know how to run with the way you was talking about him, calling this nigga a clown and everything. But at the end of the day, y'all, I was agreeing with him for real, for real. You know, I was on Florence and Marlon's side, I ain't gonna lie, but I was agreeing with the little manager, D, D or whatever his name is, because, yeah, you look like a clown, Marlon, when you was up there playing tug of war with this nigga with a mic. Like, you look dumb, and you did clown yourself and her brain. It just looks stupid. But anyway, management decides, you know, they're going to get to the bottom of it, and Florence is demanding answers, okay? So they meet up with Shasti and V, her management team, her manager or whatever. And they got a thing with him, too. I ain't mentioned this because he knows people in the Haitian community and he knows a lot of promoters. So they feel like he had a lot to do with it. He has something to do with it. Plus, her and Shasti has been beefing online. Um, basically, because Shasti is hating on her and she feels like Shasti and her manager had something to do with it because that's, yeah, she's been hating. So they meet up at the bar. And um, they're sitting across now. When they're sitting across from each other, I'm just like, okay, is this going to turn into a fight? Because everybody looked like they was real upset, you know? Shasty looked like she was ready to fight. And I was just like, Florence, girl, is you ready? Is you ready for it? Can you fight? You know, but Florence, you know, she handled it real good. She asked me, she was like, you know what? Why do you feel it's necessary for you to come for me, you know? And Shasty is all serious. She like, look, um, I'm going to make you panic every time because I don't appreciate you calling yourself the queen of Kumba. I'm like, you know what? First of all, 
anybody can call themselves anything. Like, who are you to tell her who she can't call herself? And if she think that her career has reached that plateau, then let her have it. And obviously, you haven't even reached the stamina that she has. So how can you even come at her like that? Because you don't have the audience or the crowd. So on top of that, you've been on social media hating on her, looking dumb. Because I even, y'all, when I saw her, I was like, damn, no wonder nobody feeling her. No wonder Florence is the one that everybody fucking with. Florence has the beauty. She has the body. She has the look. She has it all. And this girl, she all right. She cute. You ain't got no motherfucking body. You, you, you could tell that you're stupid because you getting mad at another bitch for what they call themselves so you're threatened. You know what I'm saying? So I can already see why you didn't make it. You know what I'm saying? And just like Florence said, bitch, what you need to do is stop worrying about me. You need to get in the studio and grind harder this whole little shit is dumb you know and just like Florence was saying too when she was upset why can't we all work together you know what I'm saying this is a Haitian community and we need to be there for our culture and put our culture up and that's what I was trying to do but this bitch sitting over here hating and not wanting me to move further and further because she's mad because I'm moving away from her Florence tells her you know and she's serious she mean and she and I was like get her Florence she was like what makes you think you in a position Okay, bitch, to tell me, because you're not even on my level, okay, to tell me what I can and cannot do. And apologize to who? Who the fuck am I supposed to be apologizing to? And for what? Bitch, you done bumped your goddamn head. This girl, Shasta, y'all, she was looking so dumb. Like, she was had a little stupid-ass face. She didn't look mad. She didn't look sad. She just looked stuck. And rightfully so, because... When you come with somebody and you're wrong, you're going to get embarrassed every time. And this is what happened. You know, she was stuck looking stupid until, you know, Florence sat that ass Oh, Florence told her, look, honey, I don't usually be meeting people here. So if I'm here, you should be honored for me to be in your presence. Oh, I said, oh, girl, off the break. Florence couldn't even finish her words. So this bitch took her little lick about it whatever, and threw it. I was like, you know what? Yeah, she's really pissed at you, Florence, and you need to watch her back because that's dangerous. This girl really does not like you, and she's going to come for you every time, you know? But yeah, she threw that cup. It wasn't a bottle. She threw that cup at her so hard, y'all, and she meant that shit. She meant every feeling of her being of that. Her manager and everything was like, y'all stupid. You deserve another manager. You need to get another manager team because they ain't right telling Florence and them. And just embarrassing her whole management team. They was looking stupid, you know? But um, the girl was real mad, and they never got an apology from them because they keep saying that they had nothing to do with it, you know, and I just think they did. I really do think they had a lot to do with it, and um, yeah, it's not right. Like, y'all need to get on and move the fuck on with yourself. That, that's not nobody's fault that you didn't make it, and you can't be blaming nobody but yourself. You need to grind harder. Ray J do too much. I used to like the fact that he does do too much, you know what I'm saying? But you do too, too much. Like, it's not even funny no more. He is at his home that him and Prince are supposed to be living in. But now they're not living in because, yeah, you always messing with somebody else. And, um, yeah, he, at first they started off by showing, you know, their home and everything still pla packed up and the plastic around us, everything, boxes playing the slow music. And then all of a sudden, you know, um, they show him going outside on the patio, um, party with a bunch of bitches. And it's just like, he living his best life, you know? He is all in his confessional saying how, you know, he's upset because, um, she wasn't there for him. And when he was in the hospital dying of pneumonia, that um, she didn't come, nobody came for two days, not even his family members, and he all fucked up about that. You know, and you keep bringing that up. I don't know whether you bringing that up to throw it in her face because you keep on saying it, you know, because you can't be this her after how many times and things that you've done to her to hurt her. You know what I'm saying? He can do whatever he wants, and this girl's are supposed to take it. That's how he thinks, you know what I'm saying? Very one-sided, very highly weird. I don't know any relationship that somebody goes through that, and it's okay, because obviously Princess has been going through this, you know, knowing what he's doing, sleeping with women behind her back, and she's okay, but if you think that you're supposed to do whatever you want to this girl, and she's supposed to take it, you know, because she has been taking it, and now that she's done, you want to throw up shit in her face as if she's wrong because she didn't come to the hospital when you had pneumonia and you was about to die. Girl, how many times? We've been hearing this for like a year now. So how many times are you going to harp on this? And I'm just starting to think that this is something that you have to throw up in her face. You know, because it can't be that you still upset and hurt about that because on top of that, you've done other things to her. So it will warrant a motherfucker not coming to see you because you always doing the most on me. But anyway, y'all, he's saying how they are in the middle of a divorce. Yes, he filed again. 
know what I'm saying? You keep filing for divorce like a little bitch, running down to the courthouse like a little bitch. Like, are you trying to force her hand? Like, what are you trying to prove? You know what I'm saying? That she's wrong? Because you the one sleeping with everybody and their mother and sister. You know, so anyway, y'all, he is living his best life out on the patio of the same house that they supposed to live in. But Princess rolled out at a whole nother condo. And um, yeah, he ended up moving 10 minutes away from her. Like, let this woman live. He do too much, y'all. He just does way too much. So he's out on the patio. He's partying with the bitches. Like I said, living his best life. Um, he ended up sitting down talking to Trick and telling Trick how he's so hurt that she wasn't there for him because he was in a hospital dying, okay? And at this point, Ray J, just give it up. We don't care. She doesn't care. You survived it. Like, get over it. You know, and all of the things, like I said, that you've done to her, why should she care? He's telling Trick that, you know, she's mad. Princess is mad because, you know, some bitch had her clothes on, you know, from their home. What? Like, uh, that is so disrespectful. First of all, on your end without Princess Ray J. Some bitch took something out of your home, put it on, and was like, I am what? You know what I'm saying? And then Princess notices it and gets mad and you got a problem with it. You know, and then he goes to tell Trick, and even if I did smash the bitch, then, you know, I don't even know her name. Like, you throwing that up like you as a hoe. You know what I'm saying? Capital H, y'all, and keep it real. If that's a girl, she will be labeled a hoe. And he's sitting there talking about how, you know, um, he can fuck anybody he wants as long as he don't catch feelings, basically what he's saying. As long as he don't catch feelings, then, you know, it's not cheating. And, um, yeah, he don't know her name, so it's not disrespectful. He's trying his best not to be disrespectful in that way. Y'all, I don't know what Ray J is thinking and what planet he lives on, but the nigga is sick and he got a problem because there's no way that that would be okay with any female. That just because you don't know her name and you fucked her, then it's okay. And you showing that you respect her, you know, but then Trick tells him, um, yeah, how did you feel when you find out that she was dating? Trick was like, well, because for me, you know, when Joy was dating and doing her little thing, I really felt like, you know, I got heart surgery. Like, he was so hurt. But y'all up there doing all this stuff on these women and don't think that they supposed to do something back on you or even be mad and not want to be with you anymore, you know? So, I was floored when Trick told Ray J, um, yeah, um, she just need to know who you are and you've been the same person that I've been knowing for like 20-something years, 25 years, and you have not changed. You've always remained Ray J. Ray J, that's not a compliment. You know, and if I was you, I would personally be offended because there is no growth in that. This man is telling you out of his mouth, you been fucking bitches and having a relationship and having no respect for Princess or any other woman that you claim you with. So why is Princess getting mad now? So he's basically telling you who you are and you want to keep with the conversation like Princess is wrong in any way. Bitch, everything after that. You should say, you know what, all right, you right. You know, I be doing too much. I do a lot. You know, it's a lot of stuff that I do on her, and it's not right, and she got a right to be pissed and mad and a right to leave, you know? So Trick said he's telling him, yeah, and then um, she can't accept you how you are, then you just need to let her go. Go ahead and let her go. Really, Trick? Because that's not what you were saying about Joy. You've been chasing this bitch around Miami, trying to get her back and ruining every relationship that she had. So how you gonna go and give him this type of advice? But before that, y'all... I'm just an advocate of when somebody is having marital problems, you never tell the person to leave. You know, all married people know that. You let the person go through whatever. It could be a little relationship, boyfriend and girlfriend, stuff like that. Leave his ass on, girl. But when somebody is in a marriage, you do not flat out and tell somebody they need to leave their wife or their husband. You just don't. You know, not unless you're on princess's side where you are taking so much shit and somebody needs to tell you that you need to leave. You know, but if somebody having problems, especially if you know that they are the problem, Ray J is the problem, why would you tell him to leave his wife? You know, I just, Trick is stupid to me too. Like, he think he's supposed to do everything under the sun to Joy and she's supposed to take, and Joy got up and left. She was over it. Then on top of that, how do you think that Princess and Joy feel? You know what I'm saying? With all this stuff that y'all got going on and they supposed to sit there and take it and be stupid. You know, they've done it for a while and people just get tired. You know, there's diseases in this world that they're not trying to catch. They're not trying to keep their heart locked up and somebody who's not being faithful. So what can you expect? You know, and now y'all are womanless. Nobody wants you. And then Ray J, you so concerned with princess dating somebody. This is what goes on. This is the next step. You know what I'm saying? She left you. Now she's dating, y'all. We're going to get into it because at the end of this episode, I was hating. And then y'all on top of that, 
Some niggas love saying how a bitch ain't wife material, yet she not wifey material. Okay, newsflash, bitch. Some men aren't. You know, some men are not marriage material. And neither of these males are marriage material. They had no business getting into a marriage. They had none. But anyway, y'all, since we're on this topic, let's just keep on going with Ray J and Princess. So she goes over to the house. By the way, y'all, she's dating and she's happy and she's been dating one guy. And yeah, her best friend was like, the smile on your face, yeah, y'all. Princess looks really happy and maybe she's at peace. And she even said too, you know, she feel like a load has been lifted off of her ever since that Ray J filed for divorce. So she's good, you know. But anyway, I was mad that she even went to Ray J's new condo. This nigga moved 10 minutes away from her. You pressed, doing too much. In the shed. You want to be with everybody else? Just leave it. So anyway, she goes over there and he got his little man suit on. He walking around like he just running shit. You know what I'm saying? He get this type of way with Princess. We always see him like this. Like he's so above her and on top of her and, you know, he's in control of her. You know, and, and just his whole shit just be like, like he grown or something. And it's just, it's unappealing. And you look like you putting on and we can totally see what you're doing. So he walking around the house acting as if he changed, showing her the rooms and stuff of the kids. He got the rooms, the names on the walls and everything and trying to show her that, you know, it ain't going to be no bitches over here. She was like, well, how should I believe you when I found a condom in the back of our bed? Like, this nigga is a whole ho. Then she was like, on top of that, you was up there trying to fuck somebody the day we got married. He was like, no, I wasn't. Bitch, who believes you? Who believes you? Because I don't. I think he was. He's a thirsty ass nigga. And he probably already had these type of complexes and need all these women because he's unattractive and short. He's all mad. Tell me something. Yeah, you talking to three niggas. You talking to She's like, no one. Okay, and his face looks too. He was like, oh, one, you know? Oh, oh okay, oh, one. Uh, and then he gonna say, oh, yeah, you grew a connection with somebody. I just wouldn't do that. You wrong, you know? And then proceeds to call her a cheater. He goes in even further, y'all. Gonna tell her, well, what does she think that her kids would think about what she's doing? Like, calling her motherhood into question. That's when she got up. She, I guess she lost it then. She just got up and went in the bathroom. But you should have laughed. You locked yourself in the bathroom? Like, for what? Then he walking around the house like he doing something, taking off his clothes. He tell him about, oh, yeah. Oh, now you're going to sit up there and cry like your feelings hurt. Like, he didn't have nothing for this bitch. He didn't even care how she felt that she was upset. Even pulled the fucking lowest trick in the book to go to her kids as if she's a bad mother and she's in her confessional really hurt she's like you know that was a low blow for me to hear him come at me like that about my motherhood you know and she was really trying to like um pick herself up and say you know everybody knows that I'm a good mother you know and I just can't believe he did that bitch when are you gonna stop being surprised on what this nigga is doing because he's always gonna be creating shit for you he's always gonna be hurting your feelings he's always not gonna give a fuck about anything that you feel because he's all about himself. Ray J is all self-absorbed and he doesn't care. But the minute that he found out that you only date in one person, oh, now you're creating an emotional connection with somebody. Okay, girl. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what we're doing. And we've already done it. So I guess, you know, he sees how much he's talking on the phone with him or something like that. And he all at the bathroom um, with his head, you know, leaned over. Some of some, um, and you talking to this nigga. You've been talking to him, calling him two or three times a day. I guess he thought that she was about to open the door and say something else to him. He looked towards that door real quick to see what she was going to say. She threw that damn mic and everything out there, and he was just looking stupid. She shut that damn door so fast, nigga, fuck you. You know, and like I say, I don't know whether she was still trying to film or whatever, because this is, you know, a part of her job, but she should have just left. I don't know why she was in that bathroom like that, you know. Um, princess, you need to come out and then just go home, get a glass of wine, and then call your friend and, you know, um, vent to him and tell him what you got and how stupid this nigga is because you need to deal the situation with him. So y'all kill Bill, okay? Um, we got to know Kill Bill a little bit, and I was glad, you know, y'all know I fuck with Kill Bill, that's my boo, and, um, I want the best for him, you know, and I don't want him to be with Sufiana, and I heard that they broke up, and I'm sorry for you, Bill, but at the end of the day, she's not for you, you know, she's for somebody else who's ratchet like her, and that's just what it is. Um, anyway, he reveals that, he's talking to his Aunt Helene, I think that's her name, and, or Helen, and that's his aunt, you know, she basically raised him and other people in the family, so his mother died when he was 11 months. And, um, yeah, he said he'd been passed around in the family and he always felt like he was abandoned, suffered from abandonment issues. And, um, yeah, the aunt was hinting around that his father was away. Maybe he was on drugs or he was locked up. So he didn't really give, um, Kill Bill time. So he felt abandoned by, you know, his mother and his father with his mother dying. 
basically he was real hurt talking about his mother's death you know she um was in a car accident and she was sitting at an intersection and a 18 wheeler mac truck just hit her and she died you know and the aunt you know that gave me chills with the aunt was like you know i was supposed to be in that car with her but i went home and took a shower so yeah that's unfortunate for bill you can see the hurt in him um i can't imagine how that feels not to grow with your mom you probably feel like like you don't have anybody, you know, and always needing a mother figure. But he said, you know, different people in his family took him in. And Helen, his aunt, um, was a parent figure to him. So that's good. And I was glad for him. Kill Bill also said that um, he went to jail when he was 16. He got out six years later, so that'll make him 22. He did get his diploma in jail, so I was glad for him with that. But he does fear going back to jail because of certain things going on around him. And he feel like he might get pulled in. So you just got to be careful, Bill. And yeah, I tell my son, just be careful of the people you keep around you because they'll have you in some shit, you know? And that's what he basically is afraid of. So like I said, he said that Suki wants him to open up about it. She always asked him to open up about it. And yeah, he was just saying he feels abandoned, you know? And this goes back to, you know, him needing love and taking stuff off of Suki. You know, y'all, sometimes when we have love and we think it's love and we see that it's not, we hold on to it because it's something. You know what I'm saying? And he feels like it is something that he gets from her and it's worth keeping, you know? And just like people say, oh, well, if a bitch taking a bunch of shit off a man, well, at least she feel like she got half of a man. She might not got the whole man, but she got half. This is how he feels. He's willing to settle for half of a bitch, you know, because he needs some type of love. So anything will go, you know, when it comes to that. And I'm just glad that they're not together no more. You know, I really am because he deserves more. Like I said in my last video, it seems like he has this wall up where he's this like hardcore dude. You know, he, he represents for a certain type of nigga. But at the same time, it seems like he has a soft interior. And he just wants love, wants to be cuddled. Even the aunt was like, he was the sweetest boy, sweetest child when he was little, you know. And that says a lot. So... Kudos to Kill Bill. And then he was telling the aunt, too, you know, I'd be wanting Suki to congratulate me on shit, and she don't. And the aunt was like, look, I'm congratulating you now. And he smiled and everything. And I was like, I know that's right. Congratulations, Kill Bill. Go in that studio. Do what the fuck you got to do. And don't worry about nothing else. Put your pain out on that mic and just let loose. You know what I'm saying? And you got a lot of stuff that you've been through on the streets and in jail. Just do that. Go to the studio and keep focused and don't keep dealing with this bitch because it's causing problems and, and just ruckus in your head. Just adding on two more problems. Just go your way and be great at it. You know, be great at what you're doing. But I feel bad for Kill Bill. He's confused. You know, he was confused since they broke up now. He was confused about the love that he was getting from Suki. And he doesn't know that unconditional love with peace can be, you know. And this is what I say a lot of times, y'all. You don't have to go through all that fussing and fighting and cussing and all this stuff in these relationships. There is somebody out there. You might have to wait it out a long time, you know. But it is somebody out there who will love you unconditionally and you can have peace. You know, in your home, it doesn't have to be like that. You got to stand up for what you want. But if you the type of bitch or nigga that, you know, you're going to tolerate it and you're good with it, but you know you're getting hell and one day is this and one day is that, and you okay with going through, you know, every day is different, then do you. I just can't do it. I, I, I refuse to do it. I refuse to do shit like that because I have other stuff to do. You got to raise kids. If y'all got kids, you got kids to raise. They around, they can see shit. They going to start doing the same shit and thinking that shit is normal. That shit is not normal. All and fuss and fighting every other day or even every week. Like, it needs to be talked out. You got to watch people's emotions on how they feel and everything and give a fuck about the person you in a relationship because you're supposed to be friends. You know what I'm saying? And it's not a competition. It's just not. Anyway, y'all, Helen tells Kill Bill he needs to go, you know, to the grave site and visit his mother and let out all his emotions and let her know you know what he's been going through and you know how he feels and kill bill like that's kind of tricky you know what i'm saying he really ain't trying to deal with it he was like he only been one time and i feel him y'all it may look fucked up that you don't go see your loved one but i don't like it y'all y'all know i got a twin brother will he died when we were seven weeks and i never met him you know and i love him to death but i don't know him you know what i'm saying and, um, yeah, I just remember when I was little, my mother and father making me go and me and my sisters go to the grave site and I hated it. You know, it's just a constant reminder that death is in the air, that, you know, someone is gone. It's so much sorrow wrapped around it. It was so many questions in my head. It's just not good. Like, it just feels all weird and I don't like it. And it's just so real. 
You know what I mean? Put it like that. It's so real. I don't want to deal with it. My personality is happy, upbeat, uplifting. So it takes me all the way down. I don't like it. I did not like it. And y'all, I need to see my twin brother and, and visit his great site. And I just, I need to do it. But it's hard. It just really is hard. And you have to stand there and talk and all this other stuff. And I don't know. Maybe I will sooner or later because it do weigh on me that I don't go. You know, and other family members go. And I probably look fucked up. But I just, I that's a lot. It just is. So basically, y'all, he goes to the grave site and he just reveals everything to his mother. What he's been doing, um, how he feels, how he wished he was there. Just like opening up his heart and it looks very therapeutic for him. Suki is there and he's introducing his mom to Suki and everything saying you just like her and everything. So a lot of that plays into it too of why he was fucking with Suki. They were saying his mother was gangster, you, you know, and she was about that life. You know what I'm saying? So maybe too with him messing with suki that gave him to go to mess with a female like that because maybe she resembles his mom and maybe probably too he feels connected to her because you know they have similar personalities i don't know maybe that's a connection here so y'all nori okay i i don't know i don't like nori i don't like the storyline i don't like the why i don't give a fuck you know what i'm saying like i don't care it's not interesting to me um, I don't know. I don't like him. Anyway, y'all, he takes his voice to New York to show them how, um, he grew up and where he came from and all this other stuff because they basically was born in the suburbs and came up, you know, like suburban dudes and they don't really know much about the hood life. So he was showing them that and everything. And, um, yeah, all the, uh, yeah, son, and all this, uh, yeah, son, and, uh, yeah, 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 word, word. And I just, I was just like, okay, I wasn't here for I'm never am. You know, we got to meet his sister and, um, they was talking about how their father, they were so close to their father and their father was a boxer and he died and how he was well respected in the community and everything. And I don't, I don't know. I don't like this storyline. I feel like it's boring. It's no drama. But anyway, y'all, that is all for this episode, for this review. And I will see you ladies and gents later. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, girl? It costs you nothing. Hit that damn like button and subscribe button and comment. Holla at your girl because I want to hear what y'all got to say. Okay? I will see you ladies and gents later. Bye.